Straight ahead on WBKV, an Alpena school board member under fire has resigned. Plus, an update on a house fire last Friday, and President Biden makes his first trip to Michigan this week. You're watching Thunder Bay News Network. WBKV News at 6 starts now. This is WBKB News at 6. An in-depth look at news, weather, and sports. From hard-hitting news stories to local events, we're there with coverage you can count on. You're watching WBKB News at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Tyler Cruz. And I'm Sherry Stewart. President Biden will make his first visit to Michigan since taking office. According to a statement from the White House, Biden will be in Kalamazoo, Michigan on Thursday to tour the Pfizer manufacturing site and talk with workers producing the COVID-19 vaccine. More information on the trip will be released at a later time as the White House is keeping the exact time and other details private for now. Well, taking a look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers, the state of Michigan is reporting 1,265 confirmed cases and eight new deaths. These numbers are from Sunday and Monday. District Health Department number four is reporting no new cases today in Alpena, Montmorency, and Presque County. The total number of current cases for counties in our area are listed on your screen, and the local health department says it has administered nearly 8,000 first and second doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine since they became available. Well, a member of the Alpena County Board of Education has issued a letter of resignation following public backlash for Facebook comments. A petition was going around today calling for the immediate resignation of Stephen Donikowski from the Alpena School Board following Facebook comments about Vice President Kamala Harris that the petition calls vulgar, misogynistic statements by an elected leader. Donikowski was under fire in 2020 for social media as well after a meme he posted captioned, All Lives Splatter. The recent comments have since been deleted, but a screenshot was provided to WBKB. The petition for his resignation currently had over 150 signatures since being created. The creator of the petition, Molly Stepanski, offered a comment saying there should be no place in our community for hatred or misogynistic, racially divisive or derogatory comments. He should immediately step down if he had any respect for his community. WBKB reached out to Donikowski and he said at that time he feels it's not best to comment, but then later he announced his resignation at the beginning of a meeting tonight. The school board is currently meeting to discuss this situation amongst other topics. Tonight's board meeting started at 5.30 and is still ongoing. The board is also voting whether to continue the COVID-19 learning plan for another month. We'll have an update on this meeting at 11. And other news, there were no injuries in Friday's house fire on Campbell Street. As fire crews arrived to the house last week, they saw flames and smoke coming from the upstairs bedroom window. They were able to rescue a cat and some fish, but a second cat is still remains unaccounted for. According to Community Risk Reduction Officer Andy Marceau, the fire damage was moderate. He says the house could be a total loss because of water damage and the removal of upstairs ceilings. Marceau adds it is possible the fire could have been avoided. At this time, we are calling it an undetermined fire uh, until we can get further information, but we cannot rule out smoking or careless extinguishment of a smoking material because the tenant uh, was smoking in that room 45 minutes before the fire started. And Marcel says he understands that residents want to smoke in their homes, but strongly recommends smoking outside. I really want people to think, start thinking about not smoking inside the residence. In the last year, we have lost uh, at least four homes because of smoking. We have lost one individual that smoking part, paid, played a part in his, his death. Marcel says at the very least, put your cigarette butts into a can of water. The cause of fire is still under investigation and the family is currently displaced. But according to Marceau, they had renter's insurance, which could be a big help to them. Well, registered patients previously barred from using medical marijuana while on probation in Michigan may now legally return to using the substance medically. The Michigan State Court of Appeals recently made the ruling the Appalachian case system case stems from a June 19th 
June 2019 grad in Traverse County road rage incident involving 39-year-old Michael Tu, who eventually pleaded guilty to assault and battery for his role in the incident. His sentence included a year of probation with a condition that he could not use medical marijuana even though he was a state registered patient allowed to do so. The new ruling helps make the Medical Marijuana Act and card associated with the patient involved in the legal system protected from penalty of any kind. Well, Habitat for Humanity of Michigan announced today it received $110,000 in funding from the DTE Energy Foundation. The funds will go to support Habitat for Humanity's COVID-19 Response and Recovery Safe at Home program. That program is used to make critical home repairs for people in West and Northern Michigan and to protect residents from Michigan's harsh weather. This is the eighth year the DTE Foundation is partnering with the organization. Habitat for Humanity's Sustainable Housing Director Tom Phillips says, quote, high job loss rates along with homeschooling and social distancing mandates compel families to spend more time inside their homes with the DTE Foundation support. Many low income families will receive health and safety repairs and upgrades at costs they can afford. Well, the freezing temperatures have helped make a beautiful image of the shelf ice along the state water lines. While beautiful, many Michiganders and tourists who flock to take pictures and see the phenomenon up close need to make sure they're staying safe while doing so. The Michigan Department of Natural Resources recommends you stay off the ice, but offers several safety tips if you choose to go out on the ice. They ask that you beware of your surroundings of all times. Ice thickness can vary greatly. Also, never go out on the ice alone and without having a plan of what to do if you break through the ice. Carry rope, ice picks, and a flotation device that can help save your life or that of a companion. Finally, call 911 immediately if you, uh, for help if you see someone fall through the ice. Electric companies are also alerting people of ice dangers. Consumers Energy is asking outdoor enthusiasts to practice extreme caution when or near ice surrounding its generation, generating in hydroelectric plants. Well, a warning for consumers, Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel is alerting consumers of a new scam that's been reported by at least one resident to the department's consumer protection team. The consumer reportedly received a call from a scammer who insisted that a new Michigan law has passed which dissolves credit card debt as long as the credit card number, expiration date, security code, and zip code are provided. This is a scam. Nestle is urging anyone who gets this call to immediately hang up. She says it is yet another attempt to cheat people out of their personal information and their hard earned money. And if it's too good to be true, most likely it, it is. is. <laughs> Very much so. So there is more news ahead for you here on WBKB. Coming up, Besser Museum is offering a live look into space. All of that's ahead later in the newscast. Thanks for that, Ellie. I'll get the shovels ready again, <laughs> right. I guess. Well, the Besser Museum invites science fans to come on by Thursday afternoon. The museum will use the planetarium to live stream the landing of the Perseverance Mars rover. Planetarium coordinator John Wachowski told WBKB this landing is so exciting because it will include the first ever attempt at a powered flight on Mars. The museum will also have crafts and cookies for attendees to take home. Occupancy is limited to 25 people per hour. You can learn more about the event on the Besser Museum's website and Facebook page. Very nice. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I kind of want to see Mars. Me too. <laughs> well, in health news, how the pandemic may be affecting children's teeth and which heart patients should be first in line for the COVID-19 vaccine. Michael George has some of the day's top health stories. COVID-19 poses an extra danger to patients with heart disease, and doctors think there should be a system for getting those at highest risk vaccinated first. The American College of Cardiology recommends patients with advanced cardiovascular disease be prioritized over those with conditions that are well managed. The pandemic may be getting in the way of children's dental care. A poll by Michigan Medicine finds one in three parents have had trouble scheduling a checkup. The good news is more than a quarter of parents say their kids are taking better care of their teeth, including more brushing and flossing and cutting down on sugary drinks. And a new type of drug may significantly increase survival of patients with the most common form of bladder cancer. Trial results published in the New England Journal of Medicine found the new class of drug helps target chemotherapy directly to the cancer cells, lowering the risk of death. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Michael George, CBS News, New York. 
Well, coming up on WBKB News, Ellie Morrison is next with your seven day forecast. Plus the photo See that you would like to send us, email it along with a short description to news at WBKB11.com. Hopefully the nice. nice isn't here for long. 35 no. degrees next Monday. I'm right. Shorts. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the sports is coming up next. But first, Jake Vanderbrook is in with a preview. What's the scoop, Jake? Yeah, Tyler, Sherry, hope you all had a good weekend next in sports. We got top plays from last weekend. I'm switching it up. Plus, when one door closes, another one opens. Well, that may be the case for Blake Griffin. More on this story when WBKB News at 6 returns. Well, Disney's newest superhero is quite squirrely. Olivia Newton-John and her daughter released a new single, and the stars of one of the most romantic movies of all time finally received stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Danya Bacchus has your eye on entertainment. And uh, who would have thought I would end up with a, a star on the Walk of Fame? Ryan O'Neill and Ali McGraw now have stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Ryan and I were lucky enough to be in a film that surprised us and the whole world. The pair played young lovers Oliver Barrett and Jennifer Cavallari from opposite sides of the tracks in the 1970 hit movie Love Story. Love means never having to say you're sorry. The Academy Award nominated movie follows the young couple as they meet in college, marry, and then suffer tragedy. We had a, uh, a real warmth for each other and uh, couldn't wait to get started and see how uh, far we could go. O'Neill and McGraw received their stars together in the first virtual double star ceremony in history to celebrate the movie's 50 year anniversary. Paramount has released a newly remastered limited Blu-ray edition of Love Story featuring commentary from the film's director along with other special features. The universe sent us Ulysses. Disney's newest superhero is a squirrel. Based on the best-selling children's book, the new series Flora and Ulysses follows 10-year-old comic book fan Flora who rescues Ulysses, a squirrel with superpowers. Flora and Ulysses streams on Disney Plus starting Friday. And Olivia Newton-John and her daughter Chloe have released a new duet called Window in the Wall. Newton John says a woman she met at a health clinic sent her the song, which moved her because of its theme of love, forgiveness, understanding, and respect. That's your Ion Entertainment. Donya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. That's all we have for you this evening. Be sure to check us out on our Facebook page and Twitter handle at WBKB. And be sure to catch us back here tonight at 11 with Stephanie Manici. Have a great evening.